Sejam todos bem-vindos à Trilha Business do Lifer Simpósio Brasil, terceira edição. Meu nome é Flávio Moitinho, sou acalto executivo da Lifer Latino América e serei o host do evento. Bom, gostaria de abrir essa trilha business agradecendo mais uma vez aos patrocinadores Everest Brasil, como patrocinador Platinum, é, como Gold, Intel, FIAP, Object Solutions e Red Hat, e como Silva, Verit e Pitang. Eu vou convidar Michel Roche, Market Manager, Glo Global Demand Generation da Lifery, é, Los Angeles, ela trabalha no Red Quarter, veio pra, ex exclusivamente para o evento. Ela vai falar sobre Persona Based Market or One to One Personalization. Which do I use and when? Please, Michelle, come to stage. Bom dia. Uh, that's my one Portuguese word that I know. Uh, I have to say thank you very much for coming because you chose me over Zeno, who is a rock star. So thank you very much. Um, like uh, you heard, I've been with Liferay. I work out of the Los Angeles office, and I've been with the company for over eight years. And right now, I'm heading up our global demand gen team out of that office. So we cover everything from social media to content, uh, nurture campaigns, um, and things like that. So today, I wanted to start off with a picture from one of my favorite movie trilogies, which is Indiana Jones. And this one is um, from The Last Crusade, and he's looking for um, the Holy Grail. And so I wanted you to have this in your mind as we go through the talk, uh, because I actually think that for marketers, um, personalization is our Holy Grail. Um, great customer experience is the company's goal. You're, we're trying to provide you know, the best experience for our customers and our prospects. But for marketers, we do that through effective personalization. So when we try and understand our customers, um, more importantly, we want to help them based on that deeper understanding to you know, achieve what they're trying to do at their workplace uh, with their company and for their customers. So I believe two things are true. The first is that personalization has evolved into the best targeting tool. So it's no longer just about getting it sort of correct or um, kind of there, but we're able to actually predict, target, and personalize at a very individual level. And second, that personas are the best resource for learning. So Historically, we've used personas to do targeting. Uh, we've developed groups of people that we want to go after, and then we use that knowledge to then target content to those groups of people. But I'd actually like to flip it and say that we want to use personas not for targeting only, um, but also to really understand our customers and um, to better personalize the uh, experiences that we're giving them later on. So what does this mean for our campaigns, and how does this affect what we do in marketing today? We'll talk about some persona basics to make sure everyone's kind of on the same page, and then we'll talk about persona-based marketing versus personalization. Uh, five things that you can do now that you can take home with you, and then um, if we have time, we'll go over some questions. So depending on your department and what your goals are for your audience, you'll have different types of personas, uh, especially if you're in you know, one industry vertical versus someone who's in a different industry vertical. Um, so there are tons of different types, but I wanted to talk about three of those. The first one is user personas. So this tends to be the groups of people that um, a department will put together if they're in product development or engineering, they're looking at how uh, users are using the products that they're creating or the services that they're putting out there. What are their experiences like? What are the things that they're trying to do with this product? And how can they uh, improve the product to help them better achieve what they're trying to do? The second one is website personas. So uh, you know, hopefully you guys all have websites, and hopefully it's all running on Liferay. Uh, but these groups of people are, um, they run the gamut from prospect, um, prospective customers, to current customers, um, advocates of your brand, and partners. And you're really thinking about, you know, for each of these different types of personas, 
how are they interacting with the content? What's their experience on my website? And how does that differ uh, across the different persona types? And then the last one is what we're really gonna focus on uh, for the rest of the talk, and that's buyer personas. So as marketers, um, you know, we're thinking about the different groups of people who are going to buy our product and then interact with uh, the content we're producing on the website. So we really cover all of these. And this is especially important as we're creating our marketing campaigns and especially the strategy around what we want to do with those campaigns. So at LifeRay, we currently have nine buyer personas and they all tend to look like this. We um, used one template uh, and we do that so it's very easy for people at our company to understand um, the, it's very recognizable, and whenever they come across it, they know, okay, this is a persona that um, I should be looking at and reading and really understanding. And for us, when we create content, we're asking, you know, which persona is it created for? And we'll go through each of the different sections on our personas and say, um, you know, based on this person's experience, is this content going to resonate them, with them? Uh, what are the types of questions that they're trying to answer? Um, what are the problems that they're trying to solve? And this is a very traditional way of using personas, uh, creating content based on who these people are, what their experiences are, what they're trying to do, and um, what some of the questions that they have. So why persona? There are benefits that go beyond just creating content, which is the traditional way of using personas. One of the first ones is to put a face to what would otherwise be abstract data. So this really allows us as marketers and others at our company in different departments to identify with these ideal prospects who will hopefully become customers and think about them in a way that's not just facts and figures. So you can group this data um, into a visual presentation that's a lot easier to understand and, you know, we talk about big data and all of the data that we're collecting, and so sometimes that can be really overwhelming. So personas are a great way to understand that and uh, really um, bucket them into, um, into different uh, sections of data that's not just, you know, this long form. Secondly, it helps to provide a structure for experimentation. So you really want to understand your audience when you're launching a campaign and, um, you know, when you change up an existing campaign. You want to try new ideas out and using the personas that you've created to kind of structure that testing and that experimentation uh, will really help you to identify where you can improve and um, what's really working and it's a great way to help organize that. It also helps you to prioritize and focus your tactics so understanding the potential revenue or sphere of influence that these personas have can help you prioritize what to work on first. So a great example is, you know, this was um, an Olympics year, and for the past three Olympics, company Procter & Gamble, uh, they've used the Olympics to put out ads, and they've directed it towards a very specific persona, and that's moms. And they really knew who they were going after, and they really understood who was in that persona. And they used that understanding to prioritize and to really focus their ads to them. So if you uh, go on YouTube and you Google uh, PNG Olympic um, ad spot, you'll see all of the different ones that they've produced. And in 2014 in Sochi, they, their tagline was, for teaching us that falling only makes us stronger. So they're really appealing to that emotional side as a parent and specifically as a mother. And you know, we all have moms and some of us are moms or we have um, you know, really good friends who are moms. And so it's very easy for us to put ourselves in those shoes and really identify with that ad. And in 2016, this year, it was it takes someone strong to make someone strong. And so for them, knowing who the person, persona was and who was in that persona really helped them to focus the ad and that marketing campaign was really successful for them. So on that same thread, um, it can also help you to highlight patterns. So there's all this data that we're collecting from 
uh, our prospects, you know, when they're coming to our website and filling out forms or when they're going to our events, they're making purchasing decisions in the stores or online. And um, it can be really overwhelming to have all of this data and not know what to do with it or how to organize it, break it down, bucket it. And if you organize this data by personas, it can help you identify patterns. So for example, you know, we might find that uh, prospects from the education industry who downloaded one of our recent white papers, they convert to a qualified lead much at a much faster rate than those from other sectors. And if we were just looking at the data about the white paper, uh, which is very common, you know, you want to know how your content is, is doing once you produce it, we might not realize that if we break it down by persona, you can actually see these patterns and these trends that can then help you to prioritize your tactics um, and do some of the other more advanced personalization things that you want to do. So why personalization, targeting, and predictive modeling, which is kind of the other end of the spectrum. So with personalization, it helps us speak to our prospects one-on-one. -on -one. You know, for us as marketers, that's the ideal place we want to be. That's the holy grail, really doing that one-to-one -one interaction. Um, one of the easiest ways to do that is with email personalization. You know, hopefully you guys are all doing that in your campaigns. And there's a social marketing strategist named Ted Rubin. And he actually has a book called How to Look People in the Eye Digitally. So this idea that uh, when you personalize your marketing or you personalize your content, you personalize those interactions that your prospects and your customers are having with you, you're really telling them, hey, I see you, and it's like we're having a face-to-face -face conversation. You're not just one person out of this whole giant group of people that I'm throwing stuff at. You know, you're unique, you're individual, and I see you, I know what your problems are. I know what questions you're asking, and I'm here to help you solve them. And because of that, you'll notice that people tend to respond a lot better to your marketing campaigns and the effort that you're putting in um, to them. When we take it a step further to predictive modeling, um, there's, it's been around for a while, this idea of predictive modeling, predictive analytics, but just recently it started to become a bigger trend with marketers. So there's lots of tools and um, products that have started to come out that help you to uh, use predictive analytics to target your marketing to people one-on-one. -on -one. And it uses data to find patterns and then offer up that content based on those historical trends and conversion rates that you see with your existing content. So it's a step beyond uh, seeing what content works and then putting that content out. It's really saying, okay, who is this person? And because of what I know about them, I'm going to offer them this specific piece of content or this email or this experience. And this can really help you be more effective in your marketing uh, because it's figuring out which actions are more likely to succeed and which are more likely to fail based on previous data that you've collected about your um, customers. So five ways that we can improve our campaigns today. What does all of this mean for us as marketers and how can we use this to um, increase conversion rates, increase the effectiveness of our campaigns? So if you have yet to start and create a persona, go ahead and start, start with one. Um, the easiest way to do that is to put out a survey. You've got your database of contacts. You've got their email addresses. Go ahead and create a survey. You want to be talking to both prospects and existing customers because you're going to get different answers from each of them. The customers have already purchased from you. Prospects, they're in the trenches. They're looking for that solution. They're figuring out, you know, what's the answer to my problem right now. You want to be specific in your questions that you ask. You really want to understand their motivations and their frustrations, who they are, what do they deal with, you know, not just um, the firmographic data, but also the behavioral data. After you've done your survey, you want to schedule in-person interviews, either on the phone, um, if you can't do it in, in person. Um, where you can ask follow-up questions to those survey answers and you can hear from them directly and allow them to give you that verbal feedback. Uh, and then, you know, you can go back and forth and find out more. Use the existing data that you have. 
Uh, there's lots of firmographic information that you're collecting from uh, your users and your customers and your prospects as they're interacting with you. And a lot of that data can be used to create an initial persona. What you want to be careful of is not stopping there. So that's why I put that third. Um, a lot of times it's really easy for us to say, all right, I've got this great data. Let me create a persona based off of it, and then we kind of stop. That's not enough. You really want to be asking those questions directly to your customers, directly to your prospects. It can seem daunting, but trust me, they'll be happy to answer it because it means for them they're going to get better service and they're going to get a better product in the end. Um, and then lastly, you want to go to your internal teams that interact with customers and prospects um, day to day. So, this could be your sales team, your support team, your customer experience team, your executive team. You, they're going to be hearing about um, what customers are struggling with or what they're looking for, what they enjoy doing. Um, and so you can use that information as well to help you round out your personas. Um, and then also, as you are creating these personas, make sure that you're testing and then refining the persona. So once every four months or six months, make sure you go back to that persona and you go, okay, is this still relevant? Are these still the problems that this, these people are, are facing? Are these still their motivations that um, you know, keep them going? Stale personas are not effective, so don't stop improving them. Personas within marketing automation, if you're using a marketing automation tool or another form of nurturing tool, um, you can use those personas within them to help you understand behavior and engagement with your nurture campaigns. So for us at LifeRay, uh, with our marketing nurture campaigns, they're, they're built against the buyer's journey. And this is our buyer's journey. Sorry, it's a little bit hard to read. Uh, but we've got five stages, and we've actually uh, mapped all of our nurture campaigns to each of the stages. And whenever we are creating a new persona, we'll go in and we'll say, um, okay, for this buyer stage, in this buyer's journey, for this persona, do I have content that can then be offered up? Am I answering the questions that this persona is going to be asking? And it's very easy to tell, because we've done this prep work, where the gaps are and where we need to create things. So there's this stat that I thought was kind of crazy, um, but it's marketers who use personas and map content to the buyer's journey enjoy 73% higher conversions from response to marketing qualified lead. So it's from Aberdeen Research, and um, it just goes to show how important it is uh, to use your personas in conjunction with um, the buyer's journey and those stages uh, as you're creating content. So it doesn't mean that persona-based content generation is dead. It just means you want to kind of take it that one step further. So for emails, uh, for example, some of the things that you would normally look at are click-through rates, um, you know, the overall performance, open rate, which is subject line success, uh, click to open rate, how well did your content do. Um, on your website, you're looking at your offers and um, your content. And with all of that, you want to make sure that you're running reports. So I'm sure a lot of you are already running you know, reports on your content and how is it performing. But make sure you also go, go back and run those same reports against your personas. This can really help you identify where um, if you just run the general report, you might see, oh, OK, this piece of content is doing really well. But if you actually break it down by persona, you might find out that, hey, there's this one group that I'm trying to target or I'm trying to go after. And actually, this content doesn't resonate with them as well as it does with all the other groups. And that's not something that you would have known had you just been running the more generic report. So things to include in here, content downloads, trial form conversions, event registrations, product purchases, e-commerce, um, on-page engagement, all of those things you can break down um, that report by persona. And remember, you want to take it from just running these metrics to um, you know, the buzzword of actionable insight. Make sure that you're identifying what you can do with that information so that you're not just generating these reports and not doing anything with it. Um, get predictive. So with personalization, you're tailoring the in interaction to the unique needs of the prospect. And with predictive marketing, 
um, you're taking that one step further. So I actually did a Google search for predictive marketing, uh, looking for a fun visual, and I decided just to take all of them and give it to you guys. And I actually liked this quote right here. This is from uh, T News, which is apparently a travel and tourism company. And they say using predictive analytics, or predictive marketing is using predictive analytics to help you better understand your customers and then offer them a unique offer at the right time. So if we understand that traditionally we would just kind of put that offer out there according to the personas, predictive marketing really says, okay, who is this person? And then based on the model that um, the tool builds for you, it will offer up that content that might be different than the content it offers up to what seems like the same persona, but in actuality, the model will say these two people will perform differently um, because of historical data. So that's kind of where predictive modeling and predictive um, personalization goes a step beyond what uh, we can do manually with personas. But what do we do if you know, we're not using predictive marketing yet and we're not using predictive models to target our customers? Personalize what you can. Um, start with your emails. Uh, you know, everyone thinks, oh, first name, that's really easy to do, and we do know that emails with personalized subject lines, they're 26% more likely to be opened, so use that. Um, it's a great, easy way to, you know, take a first step. And then go even further, you know, what else do you know about these personas and these people that you can then personalize? Um, company name, product information, department that they're in. All of these things can be personalized. So these are three email examples at LifeRay. And uh, we actually don't put the first name in our emails because we do them in the subject line. Um, but we do personalize the, the call to action. If there's things in the content that um, we can tailor to the specific industry or their job role, their department, we'll go ahead and do that. So remember when we talked about personas and how they can help you understand your nurture campaign engagement? Well, when you combine that with email personalization, you might find that subject line, uh, a, subject line one for persona A performs better and above average than a personalized subject line for um, you know, persona B, and which might perform below average. So because you know that, because you're using personas to segment um, your reports and you're also using um, email personalization, you can then say, okay, well, I'm not going to personalize this one because it tends to perform lower, whereas I will personalize this one. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and increase the segments that you're personalizing to. So start with one and then increase them. And lastly, I couldn't talk about or give a talk at Symposium without talking about LifeRay. So, um, you know, hopefully you guys are all on LifeRay and moving to DXP. Um, audience targeting is a great way to personalize your campaigns within LifeRay. Um, you can build out custom app content uh, in your native apps. Um, personalize your blogs, your landing pages, create content hubs, um, also forms. These are all great ways to use LifeRay to personalize uh, the interactions that you're having with your prospects and your customers. And then one thing is with audience targeting, there is a way to pull in um, external data that you can use to um, target your customers. So it doesn't just have to be what's included within audience targeting. It does require a little bit of coding though. Uh, secondly, con connect additional systems. So if you're using an outside marketing automation system or uh, a CRM, those all have lots of additional data that you can then use um, within LifeRay with all the content that you're generating. And lastly, the creating content piece. So just make sure that as you're creating content, you're thinking about your personas, you're thinking about how can I personalize this, and then how can I use the personas that I've created to then figure out what's working and what's not and really understand my prospects and my customers. So I wanted to um, end this talk with this quote. Uh, it's from Evergage, which is a personalization company, and it says, the more you can understand your customers at a group level, so at the persona level, as a blueprint for more granular targeting, that's your personalization, your predictive marketing, um, using predictive analytics, 
the less likely you'll be to throw darts in the dark. So, you know, make sure that, you know, as marketers, we're doing all this work to create content, create those experiences, engage with our customers, and you want to make sure that you're constantly improving and doing as much as you can so that um, all that work that you're doing is not in vain. So there are a couple presentations um, tomorrow that I would recommend you go see. One of them is self-promotion. But the second one, Charles is giving a talk on advanced engagement with life reforms. And um, this is a really great way to increase the conversion rate of your current forms and improve the data that you as marketers are then gathering for your different persona types. All right, thank you.